What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to learn how to build a simple notepad clone or text editor in Python using a graphical user interface. This is what it's going to look like in the end. So we're going to have a big text box where we can just write some text, tell the world what is up and so on. We can also change the font size here to 24 to 18. Of course you can also make this dynamic if you want to. Uh, and we can also save the file and store it on a desktop, for example, as test.txt. And we can, of course, also close it like this. And we can also press on run again and open the file from the desktop. There you go. We can close this. It's going to ask, do you want to save your work? We can cancel. We can say yes. We can say no. So we can save it again here. Uh, and this is what we're going to build today, a very simple notepad clone in Python. Now for this project, we're going to use PyQt5 and not TKinter. So we're going to use the Qt framework in order to design the graphical user interface and not the core Python module TKinter. And we're also going to go to script kitty way because we're not going to code the UI uh, completely in Python. We're going to use the Qt designer in order to drag and drop the graphical user interface. And the first thing you want to do is you want to open up your command line of choice, your terminal of choice, and you want to install PyQt5 by saying pip install Pi Qt5 like that. Uh, now, maybe you're going to have some difficulties with that. I mean, most of the time not, but if for some reason Qt is not installed, uh, you might have to install Qt itself by just downloading an installer for Windows or using the proper install command on Mac and Linux. Just Google your way through it, but this should be fine for most people. So just pip install Pi Qt5. And once you have that, you can just import uh, from Pi Qt5. Qt, uh, what was it widgets, we're going to import everything and then we can start using that we're also going to need from Pi Qt5 import UIC. And in order to create the graphical user interface, as I said, we're going to use the Qt designer, which is a software that you have to download. I mean, you can also just design the software in Python, I have uh, or the graphical user interface in Python, I have a tutorial on that as well. It's not too difficult, but it's just more convenient, more comfortable to do it in the graphical user interface tool. So uh, we're going to run Qt designer again, you should find a link in the description down below. Uh, that's the application here, Qt designer, and we're going to design a very basic notepad, we're going to create a new form with a template main window. And in here, we're going to start with the menu bar, we're going to say file, we're going to add the option open, uh, not open M, just open, we're going to add the option uh, safe, and we're going to add the option close. And here we're going to have an option tab with the font size. And in here, we're going to be able to choose 12 and 18 and 24. And you can choose whatever you want. Uh, you can also make this dynamic with a message box that asks you what point size you want. Uh, but this is what we're going to do in a the menu, then we're also going to need a basic plain text edit. Let me just see in the project if I use the plain text edit or a normal text edit. Um, yeah, I used to plain text edit. And what we're going to do is we're just going to resize this a little bit. And then we're going to right click on the background. And we're going to go to layout, and we're going to choose layout in a grid. And this is going to fit this uh, into into the background into the window. So we don't need to uh, resize it manually. And because of that, it's also going to be dynamic. And to be honest, I think that's actually it. That's all we need to do here. So we're going to save that as editor dot UI on the desktop, and we're going to drag and drop the UI file into Python into the same directory here. And there you go, it's an XML file, we can close this and now we can start with the actual development. And what we're going to do is we're going to create our own class, which we're going to call my GUI, you can call it whatever you want. And it's going to extend from Q application or actually no, from Q main window, we're going to have an application and a main window. So it's going to extend from Q main window, and we're going to define the constructor here, we're going to call the super constructor, which is going to be my GUI and self as a parameter here, and then init. there you go. 
and we're going to say UIC load UI editor dot UI and self and then self dot show like that. And then we need a main function down here. We're just going to say app equals Q application with an empty parameter list. Usually you pass sys dot argv. Then uh, we're going to say window equals my GUI and then app dot exec underscore. So this should be enough to display the graphical user interface that we just designed. No, of course, we need to run main, sorry. So if name equals main, call main. There you go. And you can see the graphical user interface is now done. Uh, we can change a bunch of attributes here like the title. I'm not sure if we can do that in the Qt designer. So if I click on the window, can I change the name, object name? Uh, there you go, window title, but we're going to do that in Python so I don't have to swap out the files again. Um, and we're going to do all of that in the init function. We're going to just say self dot set window title and we're going to call this neural nine notepad clone like that. So this should be enough to just have a different title now. There you go, neural nine notepad clone. You can name it again, whatever you want. And all we need to do now is since the GUI is actually done, all we need to do is we need to add the functionality. And for this, we're going to go into the QT designer here. And we're going to just click on the individual elements and see what object name they have. So this is the open action. So it has action open actually chose the open M name. So maybe I should change that save that and I need to swap that out again. So let me just delete the UI file and add it again. And by referring to these object names, we're going to be able to uh, connect them to certain functions. So all I need to do in order to connect the open function to something, for example, is I need to go to self dot action open, and then I need to say dot triggered dot connect, and I can pass a function to it. But first of all, I want to I want to care about I want to take care about uh, or I want to take care of the uh, font sizes. So we're going to create a function here in the class which is going to be change size or change font size. You could also call it and we're going to pass size here. And all this is going to do is it's going to just say self dot plain text edit, which is the object name of this field here, plain text edit, as you can see, uh, we're going to set the font here to and we need to import for that the Q font. So from pi Qt five dot Qt GUI, we're going to import Q font. And we're going to set this font to Q font, Arial and uh, whatever the size is. All right, so this is the change size function. And now we're going to say, okay, whenever we click on one of these uh, change size buttons here, we're going to trigger that. So if I click on 12 PT, it's the action 12 PT, we're going to call the function with the parameter 12. So we say self dot action 12 PT dot triggered dot connect. And we're going to connect this to the Lambda expression of calling self dot change size with 12. So we make this a Lambda expression because we're calling the function here. And by making it a Lambda expression, we make it a function. Uh, we, we pass the function. And once it's triggered, we're going to execute this part here. So we can copy that and we can change this to 18 and to uh, 24, right? Was it 24? I think it was 24. And we can change this also to 18 and to 24. There you go. So this should be enough actually to change the size. Let's see if it works. There you go. It works perfectly fine. Now the default should be also Arial, otherwise it looks stupid. So let's go down here and change this to Arial. There you go. Save the project again and swap out the files again. Would be more intelligent to just directly edit that file. But for video purposes, I now have it separately. There you go. Okay, so we now know how to change the text size. All we need to do now is just saving, 
loading and basically closing the window. And we want to have a basic dialog that says, okay, do you really want to close this? Do you really want to, uh, or do you want to save your work and so on? Um, but first of all, let's do the open and the safe stuff. So we're going to say self dot, what is the name of open, open action, action, open, action, safe. There you go. So self dot action open dot triggered dot connect. And we're going to connect this to self dot open underscore file. And we don't have that yet. So we're going to say def open underscore file, and we're going to open a dialogue. So we're going to need a dialogue. I'm not sure if we have to import anything for that. I think it's part of the widgets already. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say options equals Q file dialogue dot options, just so we can pass something. I'm not even sure if that is uh, required, but we're going to do it. Uh, and then we're going to say file name and a return value that we're not really interested in is going to be Q file dialog dot get open file name. So this causes a dialog to appear that asks for a file name in order to open a file, which is different from saving a file, because if you want to open a file, the file has to be there. If you want to save it, it doesn't have to be there. Um, and here we're just going to pass self as a uh, as the uh, root or as the as the parent, then we're going to pass open file as a title, empty string, and then we're going to pass the file formats that we're going to accept. And we need to do it like that we need to pass uh, what they're called, for example, text files, then we want to say space, and in parentheses, we're going to say star dot txt. And in order to add another file type, we're going to say semicolon, semicolon, and the other file type, for example, Python files, and then again, star.py, for example. And in the end, options equals options. So I think that should be it. Yes, this is the file dialog. And uh, after that, as a result of that, we get the file name, what we want to do is if the file name is not empty, which means that the user has chosen something. If that is the case, we're going to open that we're going to open the file name in reading mode SF, and we're going to say self dot plain text edit dot set text is going to be f dot read the content of the file. There you go. Uh, so that should actually work already. Let's run this. Let's change the font size to 18. And let's open um, the test.txt file. Okay, this doesn't seem to work. What's the problem? Oh, of course, we need to say set plain text, not set text, set plain text. Let's try again, file open desktop test.txt. There you go, we can change this 24. There you go. Okay, so the open function works. Let's do the same thing with the safe function, we're going to say safe or action safe is going to be connected to safe file. And for this, we're going to create a new function def save file. And we're going to have options again, q file dialog dot options. And then we're going to also have file name again, and a parameter that we don't care about. But this time we're going to call the function q file dialog dot get safe file name like that. And again, we pass self we pass save file here as a title, empty string. And then again, we can choose the file names, uh, or actually the file types, the file extensions, text files, star.txt. And if we want to, we can also say all files, and just star like that. So it will accept all the files. And as options, we pass options. There you go. And then we're going to say if file name is not empty. What you want to do is you want to open that file with open the file name in writing mode as f f dot write, whatever is the content of self dot plain text edit dot to plain text like that. All right, so that should work as well. Let's try it. Let's try to just write something here and save this. 
into a basic text file here. You can see also that we can choose different file types here and it also displays different files. So let's save this, let's close this, let's run this again. Let's try to open this. There you go, it works. All right, so the only thing left is we wanna have uh, the close event. Now the close uh, the close button is actually quite simple. We need to say self dot action close triggered connect is just going to be exit. This is not really difficult. Uh, and then we also want to have the event. So if we click on the X button, what is going to happen? And for this, we're going to say close event self, or actually we need to call this close event. I think this is a naming convention because this is the actual function that we're overriding. This is not a custom function. This is the actual close event function. So we need to call it close event with a capital E and we need to pass an event here. And what we're going to pass here is a dialogue. So dialogue is going to be Q message box. And this Q message box is going to have a text. This text is going to be do you want to save your work question mark. And then we're going to say dialogue dot at button and we're going to add three buttons. The first one is going to be a Q push button with a text. Yes. And it's going to have the role of Q message box dot yes role. And we can copy that now three times. And we can change this to no and we can change this to cancel. And this one is going to be the no role. And this one is going to be the reject role. And the result of that because this is the first position, this is the second position, this is the third position is going to be zero as a value here, one as a value here, and two as a value here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say the answer is whatever we get from that dialogue. If the answer equals zero, which means yes, then we're just going to call self dot save file. Elif, the answer is two, which means that we canceled. In this case, we're just going to ignore the event. So event dot ignore. In this case, of course, we're going to say event dot accept. Um, and basically, if the answer is no, we're just gonna proceed and do nothing. So we're just gonna let it close. I think that's actually it. So we're done with the actual editor. I think one thing that needs to be changed is let's see, let's increase the font size here, uh, make it scrollable, right? So if I have a lot of text here, what happens? Okay, vertical scroll works. But I think that by default, we have text wrap, as you can see. And this is not good, or at least I don't want it. So we need to go to the QT designer. And I think where was it? Uh, where is the option? What is it called? Text edit line wrap mode. There you go. And no wrap. Save it and replace this file again. One less time, hopefully. There you go. Run it again. And now it should be not wrapping the text anymore. There you go. You can see the scroll bar here horizontally as well and vertically as well. And this is how you build a simple notepad clone in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.